Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Comics Illustrator Ron Friends, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Podcast. Termini, Termini, Termini! Hello, welcome back, kids. That's right. Terminus is still running amok here on Marvel Tales. I am Phil, joining me, as always, that man god himself, it is... Just in the owl, evolving further and further before your very eyes. The god of the owls. <laughs> Who? Who? Boom. That's right, kids. So, yes, we're back here to wrap up this whole Terminus Factor. This time we're going to cover Aven- Avengers West Coast Annual. What is that? Number five. Yep, and Avengers right. Annual 19. Crazier and crazier. Yeah. Boy, is it ever. And uh, I believe I read somewhere. Did you know? I mean, did you ever see this? I guess they said they changed the name from West Coast Avengers to Avengers West Coast. I think I think one of the primary reasons is because a lot of this, well, most of the comic shops put their books in alphabetical order. Oh. So that way yeah. you'd have Avengers and West Coast Avengers next to each other. Yes. And also uh, Avengers uh, Spotlight. Yes. As well. Was, was going on at the time, which was solo Avengers before that. Yes, yeah, so that way they'd have but all their Avengers books together, yeah. All, all three of them all in the same row. That's smart, yeah. That makes sense. Because even though he wasn't on the book long, I know John Byrne was, I think John Byrne had like both books maybe for a few months, and he was like wanted to basically make it, oh yeah, it's basically just one team, people can go back and forth and stuff, but again, mm-hmm. Byrne wasn't on there for that long. Yeah, he was, I think he was writing both for a few months, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. but yeah, that changed pretty quick. <laughs> They're like, yeah, no, we're not going to have it be one big loose configuration, that's too confusing. All right, so... Like we said last time, yeah, no synopsis for the West uh, the West Coast Avengers annual, but the Avengers one we do, so. Mm. This one, I think, is my favorite. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, I think this, yeah. this, yeah, this might be my favorite, too. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Ave- Avengers West Coast or West Coast Avengers annual five, <laughs> uh, <laughs> September 1990, again, the Terminus Factor part four, when Titans thrash, uh... Uh, writers Roy and Dan Thomas again, uh, penciler Jim Fry, inker Keith Williams, uh, colorist Renee Witterstatter, letterer Diana Elbers, and editor Howard Mackey. All right, so this one starts with the West Coast Avengers once again reactivating the hu- the original Human Torch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, after the Scarlet Witch had her most recent nervous breakdown. Yes. Uh, she um, deactivated him using her hex powers and they finally brought him back, which I loved. I, mm-hmm. I was so happy when the, when John Byrne brought the original Human Torch back and put him in the Avengers. I thought that was such a great idea. It was basically like, nah, he was never the Vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, what, I thought it was nice great. That nice splash and, page. Yeah. yeah. So good. And, and James Fry, too, is one of my favorite artists as well. I love his stuff. And he did a great run uh, for Mark Spector Moon Knight back in the 90s that was really good. And, yeah, any time that I've seen his artwork, I've always been impressed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I love his stuff, definitely. And Keith Williams was an inker on Quasar. I know that because uh, mm. a while back, uh, good friend um, Matt Kona, who used to do the Quantum Zone with me and Will, uh, sent me and Will uh Got, he got Keith Williams to oh, sign, nice. so I got issue twenty-two of Quasar signed by Inker Keith Williams. I love it. I was like, I already have that issue. I'm like, I should slab that. And he was like, he's like, yeah, you can. He's like, but I guess uh, they don't like count the uh, the signature unless they're there to witness it. 
Oh. Yeah, I'm just oh. like, I'm like, oh, I guess I could slap it anyway, but I'm just like, that's stupid. Yeah. I guess it's to prevent counterfeiting and stuff, but. Yeah. I'm like, how how many places can they be at one time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have teleportation powers. So, yeah, the uh, Avengers reactivate the human torch, and then, uh, I love the, love the torch. How long have I been deactivated this time? <laughs> uh, only a couple <laughs> weeks or whatever. Yeah. Trust us, it wasn't a bunch of decades this time. Yeah. Uh, but then they're basically telling him, yeah, Scarlet Witch is all right now, even though we don't see her here. And then mm. they're talking about Quicksilver, and then Quicksilver runs in and says, just like last issue, this one begins with a phone call. Hercules called from San Francisco. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then basically giving you the quick recap of the Termini and... Uh, Oh, Machine Man's here still, so he's like, "Yeah, I want to get the, I want to get the creature who killed uh, Peter Spalding." Mm-hmm. Yeah, Iron Man's there. Yeah, I'm like, did Iron Man forget the what? Iron Man wasn't going to check in with Thor and Hercules. Basically, like, ah, oh, I'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, I got this. The Avengers West Coast will handle this. I know, but he's like, yeah, I'll fill you guys in all on the way, and then yeah, that's when uh, the Quicksilver, I guess, is basically telling him, oh yeah, okay, oh, yeah. One other thing, Hercules said. Uh, yeah, there's two terminuses now fighting each other. And they're 100 feet tall. 150 feet tall. Yeah. Because then you turn the page to the credits and you see Hercules standing there by Medusa's serpentine blocks. Well, yeah. The yeah. two creatures are talking trash to each other and embroiled in a big conflict. A duel of the titans. Yes. Basically like, oh, I'll kill you, father. No, I'll kill you, son. Yeah. Yeah, the new Terminus has, basically, has broken off its own tail and using it as a weapon. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I love that. I think I think a lot of us have known uh, women like that use their tail as a weapon. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, Hercules is like, what do I do? And then he sees the Quinjet show up and uh, the West Coast Avengers show up. Mm. And Hank Pym's got a couple of uh, little devices oh, yeah. to try out. Oh, my God. What's the Wasp wearing? I swear I've seen her in this costume before. That's impossible. Yeah. Actually, in this around this time, she stayed in the same costume for a few weeks. I think it was a record. Yeah. She had that blue and white one for a while. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Hercules is like, oh, thanks for showing up. And, uh, yeah. Hank and Janet are like, we're surprised. We figured any menace you and Thor could in hand, the one had, had to be a Whopper. No, we're wrong. It's two Whoppers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Hercules is updating them on Thor and saying, he must have made a miscalculation. He Terminus returned, but Thor did not. And Terminus said something Ooh. about incorporating the owner into his very being. That's problematic. Yeah, and Hank's like, well, how, the, how could he absorb it, let alone, you know, lift it? Hmm. True. Uh, and that's when uh, Machine Man and Iron Man and Wonder Man and the Human Torch go into position with the lenses that Hank Pym yep. enlarged to large size. Basically, trying to create it creates a big flash, and he's try, they're trying to create an optical illusion that lure the both terminus is away from the city. Mm-hmm. I love it, the Quinjet Hawkeye just thinking, he's, you know, basically Hank Pym's barking at orders. He's like, nobody really appointed him or Janet in leader. They just kind of took over. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye's got this whole dejected look on his face. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> forgotten, but not gone. That's me. Oh, Hawkeye. Yeah. Such a, fra- such a fragile ego. <laughs> basically, they just yeah, kind of basically took over. Well, again, too, Hawkeye just basically, like, the, after U.S. agent show, basically just takes off, you know, and hangs out with the uh, Great Lakes Avengers for a while. Yes. So it's like, yeah. well, someone had to take over while you just ran away, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, <laughs> I was going to say, there's two founding Avengers. Basically, this team has three founding Avengers, although people don't know that about Iron Man at the moment, but. Mm-hmm. So I wonder, if, was that them trying to give cred to this team where it's like, oh, yeah, three of the uh, original Avengers are on this team. Yeah, probably. Mm. Yeah, originally Hank and Janet weren't on the Avengers West Coast. Mm-mm. Like Hank came in early, but yeah, Janet was mm. out for, yeah, she was on the other team. And then, yeah, uh, yeah so the Avengers are trying to trick the Termin- Terminuses and uh, then I guess term, but they both figure it out and we see the 
what the younger mm-hmm. one fire on yeah human torch and wonder man destroys the lens wonder man just tries to deck it <laughs> punch him right in the even, mouth <laughs> even torch does this cool thing where he creates like duplicates of himself yeah it's yeah. made out of fire yeah yeah i like that because we see the terminus is shooting one and he's like nope close but no cigar <laughs> and i love this part too phil where, where hercules is like oh yeah I, I i remembered that time that i destroyed uh Terminus's armor in the Savage Land. I could do that again, right? He leaps it. <laughs> it's so funny. Like the, Hercules is in so many. Hercules is so many fights over the centuries. He's like, "How did I beat this Terminus? Ah, yes, I uh, <laughs> was hurled with great velocity at him, and yeah, ripped basically ripped into his armor, ripped him right down the middle. Yeah, which worked the first time. So he thought he could repeat his success from before. But yeah, because he he's standing. Mistaken. He's standing on top of the Quinjet this time. Yeah, the, yeah, when he gets that start, but yeah, he just bounces off the new Terminus. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> but then you, uh, uh, Lord. Uh, so Wonder Wonder Man's like, better let me handle this. I may be fighting out of my class, but I'm more in the ballpark than you are. Saying the U.S. agent at U.S. Yeah. Agent. I love U.S. agent. <laughs> that must be why they call you Wonder Man. I wonder where in blazes you get off, thinking you can tell a U.S. agent what to do. <laughs> yeah, as the U.S. agent leaps yes. out of the Quinjet onto the creature's back. Yeah, I love that. And the Torch is like, what does he think he's going to do? And you know, Wonder Man's like, I learned a long time ago, Torch. The U.S. agent may be something of a blowhard, but he's a brave blowhard. Oh, yeah. He's got guts. Yeah. The wasp flies into the, the creatures basically under its armor. Yeah, thinking she can she like zap something inside, but it's basically all energy inside. Yeah. And then uh US agent almost falls off the outside of the of Terminus and gets caught by Wonder Man. <laughs> yeah. uh, Oops. And then, of course the two terminuses are about to fight again, but then uh yeah, Hank's coming at him with or was it Hank and Hawkeye are coming out with a Quinjet. Yeah, the yeah, the other the other group is trying to deal with the original terminus and not having any success either. Yeah, but that of it, yeah, the Quinjet gets shot down, and they're just like, "Boy, we lose more Quinjets this way." Yeah, small wonder <laughs> Tony Stark went bust a time or two playing our sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great line. And that's when Hawkeye says, "Speaking of Stark, he's like, yeah, he's like the." Do you think there's really somebody else under this new Iron Man's tin can trousseau? Uh, <laughs> and Hank's like, later. Later, Hawkeye. Okay. Yeah. And then they see a couple cars on the road about to get stepped on by Terminus. So Hawkeye starts shooting the original with rocket arrows. Yeah, that's the, kind of the best they can do at that point. And they're almost stepped on. If it weren't for the timely intervention of Quicksilver. Yep. I love you. He, he saves and they stay there looking all smug. Yeah. Perhaps I have a few more uses than you have imagined. Uh, so, so, yeah, Iron Man and Machine Man come swooping in and start blasting Terminus. Uh, and then they start fighting again. Yep. And as they as they do, it, uh, they can start feeling it around the world, like all these vibrate these earthquakes are happening from this massive conflict yeah and hank's saying if he you know if he journeyed it all if the original terminus journeyed it all the way back to earth to fight his son there must be a reason hmm. mm. oh there's a reason all right oh yeah <laughs> because the new terminus eventually shrinks down and the original terminus eats him yeah uh, and they merge uh, into uh, one <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah tastes like chicken no <laughs> Yeah, there's a big explosion, and then you get a uh, four-armed Terminus. The ultimate Terminus. Yes. Uh, they basically just, well, the new one basically just walks off. Mm-hmm. Twice as large as either of the original Terminuses. Uh, so then U.S. agent's like, we couldn't stop either one of those originals. How are we going to stop this guy? <laughs> then, on, then on the last page, we get, there's, there's the East Coast Avengers. Yes. And there's Quasar. Yep. Yeah. Along with Cap, Vision, and She-Hulk. Yeah, that was a great team too. I really enjoyed that lineup, the Avengers. Oh yeah, around this time, and four would be there, but he's still floating in space, kids. Right, <laughs> he's otherwise indisposed right now. He gets up to some uh, some singing in the next issue. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is so funny that our cliffhanger for this issue is like, where are we going to meet the East Coast team? And Cat, we just see Cat pointing a finger, going there. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> uh, we'll split the difference right about here, but they would all know where he's pointing to. Yeah. 
<laughs> such a big cliffhanger. Where are they going to meet? Yeah. Then we get another media watch story. Mm, yeah, this one about. was also, I felt like a waste oh, of time. Oh, it's Nightline. So what is that? Ted Koppel or whatever? Ted Koppel and all this stuff. I thought that was a waste of time. I was like, oh, here we go again with this. Yeah, this one's basically just a bunch of talking heads. Yeah. Yeah, literally. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I think it's a waste, but I think that the last media watch we'll get next issue is like the best one, kind of. Mm, yes, yeah. with the uh, Andy Andy Rooney. Andy yeah. Rooney. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Uh, then we get uh, oh God, this story, uh, the first uh, backup story that takes place basically at this. Uh, it's basically Sea World. Uh, yeah, I actually liked this one because yeah. it prominently featured Firebird. Yes. And I'm a big fan of Firebird. I feel like she wasn't given hard, uh, nearly enough uh, time in comics. And uh, it was great to see her again. Because she, she was a member of the team for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we saw these aquatic, these Atlantean guys who were from Atlantis Attacks. Oh, they yeah. They were in, I think, the New Mutants Annual. That. Oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Atlantis Attacks. That's another one we're going to do next year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I just yeah, love we the, should we should totally do Atlantis attacks. Yeah, I just love the name of the story because it's like at this like uh, Sea World type place. Tanks for nothing. Tanks for nothing. Yeah, because the so Atlanteans good. are all mad. That they you know all these sea creatures are being basically held in captivity. Which I I not gonna lie, I was kind of on their side too. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They shouldn't be performing tricks for people. Free those animals. Uh, but then Flameberg gets reinforcements from Hank, Jan, and Hawkeye. Hank Pym, Hank Pym has switched uh, uh, his his uh, overalls now. He's wearing purple. Yeah. Dark purple. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Looks very good on you, Hank. I mean, if if Janet had been wearing some purple, man, they'd, be, they'd all be in purple. Yeah. But no, she switched her costume in this in this one. I love their leave from, it. From the first story. Hawkeye, who's piloting today? And Hank, you fly. I want to go over the shrunken equipment that I carry in my pockets. <laughs> It'll only take 15 minutes. I love how he just like <laughs> he keeps everything in like the pockets of this. Uh, well, it was the 90s. It was, he was the original pouch man. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Just don't see him. We had pouches for days. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so... The Avengers are fighting these uh, Atlanteans. Hawkeye catches one in, with an electro net arrow. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, this could have been. I mean, this could have been like a regular issue, like a fill-in issue. I think so too. Yeah. yeah, like a standalone one. Yeah, with a little bit more members of the team maybe involved in the story, mm-hmm. other than these three. Yeah. Because that's the thing, like, after a certain point, like, in the main book, like, Flame Bird never comes back, it doesn't come back, but... Yeah. Hey, get her in the back. Yeah. Like, if you didn't read this annual, you wouldn't know, hey, hey, there's a new Flame Bird story. And leave it to uh, the great uh, Kurt Busiek, too, to to involve her in um, the Kang Dynasty. Oh, yeah. She had a very focal point in that. I was so happy about that. That was another reason I love that story so much. But she has some great moments with Thor in that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fantastic. I love Firebird. But, yeah... Th- I, I enjoyed this backup story a lot. I thought that this the story was good, the art was good, it was good, a good action sequence between the two groups of characters. Mm-hmm. And it, at the end, they kind of came to a a mutual agreement. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although it's kind of a downer ending. Yeah, where it's basically like, oh yeah, these part, these yeah. these uh, species are still being hunted. Yeah, kill the whales that they set free. All of a sudden, there's a whaling ship right on their ass immediately. It's like, oh, awesome. Yeah. People suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then uh, the next backup story, yeah, we get U.S. Agent, Hawkeye, Iron Man, and Vision mm. filling in for Wonder Man because Wonder Man's like, yeah, I need some... Uh, can you guys fill in for me? And then they find out it's a uh, monster truck show. <laughs> And the only one who's excited is U.S. Agent. Yes. <laughs> I loved that. He was the only one who was happy about it out of all of them. A monster truck show we get in for free? He's like, we are so lucky. <laughs> oh, man. And then this villain, the, the one of the best villain names ever, Dr. Goodwrench. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Goodwrench. He could basically take control of machines. So, of course, yeah, he's taking 
over all these monster trucks and stuff and attacking the Avengers. He says the machines talk to him. And uh, I mean, it's pretty much at the end. Hawkeye's like, they're not talking to you. That's called schizophrenia. Yeah. Well, vision too. He's like, he's like, you know, he's like, I can, you know, I speak many machine languages. He's like, and I'm telling you, they're not talking to you. (laughs) He even took over Iron Man's armor. So, yes, I liked that part. That was cool. So basically, yeah, that's, they're like, yeah, we'll get you help. Uh, yeah, yeah. We we need to get you a therapist, <laughs> Doctor Goodfinch. You need an actual doctor. I love that the the end there, the last page. Where like Hawkeye's telling him, he's like, "Yeah, we'll get you all the help you need." And an Iron Man, oh yeah, who's gonna help Wonder Man after I get through with him? <laughs> <laughs> and Doctor Goodfinch is hugging the Vision. Yes, I love it. Oh Lord. Then this next story, holy lord, honey, I shrunk the hyperatomic anti-proton cannon. This is great, too, because this also had artwork from the great James Fry. Yes. And it was hilarious. This little story is so funny. Where Hank lost this uh, machine, this delicate machine that could destroy the compound, so. Yeah, and everybody's (laughs) freaking out, and like, especially U.S. agent, like, how could you possibly do this? And then, like, uh. He tells Wonder Man not to move because if he steps on it, he can destroy it so, or set it off. So Wonder Man's just standing in the middle of the room eating like this giant bowl of like nachos or chips or something. Nachos and <laughs> chips, yeah. And the little cannon device, of course, is right at the bottom of the bowl of chips that he's been eating. So when he empties it out, yeah. he accidentally eats it. <laughs> oh, yeah. He has like that explosive like, you know, like brr. He like she he like burps fire. <laughs> yeah. uh, I love that. Even though it was only like four or five pages, it was still a great little I story. Yeah. And basically, Hank telling uh, Juan to get out of the room. He's like, "Your hex power might set it off." <laughs> exactly. Whatever you do, don't use your hex power in here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, just leave Wanda, please. Just leave. But at one point, they're all like crawling on the floor, except for Wonder Man, who's eating his bowl, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this one panel, it doesn't look like Wonder Man staring at Wasp's butt. It's just like... It does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. It's so weird. And then, uh, that's like the end of the... That's like the end of the issue. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. All I right. loved it, though. They, yeah, they, we had some great backups in this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're ready to get through the last part. Synopsis yeah, and all. Here all we, right. Here we are. Part five of five. All right, kids, so two teams of Avengers are uh, coming in here, so... Uh, hold on, let me get the link for... Yep. All right, part five, Avengers Annual 19. Uh, of course, from September 1990. <laughs> this title. Oh, no. <laughs> Beat Me in St. Louis. <laughs> 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 Oh, boy. So I wonder where they're going to meet up. All right. Uh, writers, once again, Roy and Dan Thomas. Penciler Herb Trimpey's back. Uh, inker Jeff Albrecht. Uh, colorist Paul Beckton. Letterer Rick Parker. And editor Howard Mackey, once again. Uh, merged with his offspring, the Termini, Terminus is now a 300-foot colossus bent on destroying the Earth. And the Avengers East and West Coast teams join forces with the self-appointed Great Lakes Avengers to combat him but to no avail. Meanwhile, Thor, his hammer incorporated into the body of the monstrous menace, has been left adrift in space. Reaching a small planetoid, the Thunder God recites Asgardian runes, reactivating the spell which makes Mjolnir always return once it was thrown, and Terminus is pulled off the Earth with several Avengers in tow. The alien giant's lance is also his means of locomotion, so when the heroes rest it away and hurl it into deep space, Terminus is forced to feed on his own energies to sustain himself and swiftly implodes. Fortunately, Thor's hammer escapes the resulting black hole, enabling the Asgardian Avenger to teleport, transport his teammates home. Wow. Mm. Yeah. What did you think of this one, Phil? (laughs) I'm like, I mean, I, I I like it, but it's like if if it, if you didn't need the other Avengers to hold off the ter- the two terminuses on Earth, basically Thor could have did this himself. Yeah, yeah, he could have done his he could have done his um, Asgardian rune song. Yeah, 
at any moment in time. Brought Terminus to space, uh, probably yeah. destroyed the, he broke up that lance again, and then, you know, mm-hmm. transported him himself into a black home. Black hole. Yeah. Yeah. Ba- yeah. So basically, the only, the only thing, the only, uh, we needed the rest of the Avengers for so more mayhem wasn't wrecked on Earth while <laughs> Thor was taking right. his good old time. Just to distract him long enough so that he didn't end up destroying St. Louis and who knows what else. I guess he needed to be standing on, on solid ground, but it's like he waited a while. You know, he's like, oh, there's a there's like an asteroid I can like kind of mm. hurl myself to. Yeah. It's my qu- oh, yeah, he, de- he needed the atmosphere because it... it for the oxygen. You had to hear yeah. the rune song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Boy, that was a and that, Now when I when I read that um that sequence where he's singing the the song and all that stuff and all the sweat's coming off his face, all I can hear in my head is the the trollolo song. Just like singing it on an asteroid. At the top of his lungs, sweat coming down his face. Ah, uh, make it topical. He's singing, uh, yeah, about he is a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. <laughs> <laughs> Life is in plastic. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't like the art in this one. Herb Trimpey is, I, I love his Hulk stuff, and I loved, um, he did a comic book called Shogun Warriors with Doug Mensch. In the late seventies, it was great, but in this, I did not like it. I think that this, the anchor that he was paired with, was not a good, yeah, fit for this. Some and, of this artwork yeah. is pretty, pretty stinky. And again, yeah. I wonder if he he they were rushing him too because he did the pencil mm-hmm. at least one of the other uh, annuals. He did too, the Thor so, one, yeah, he did the Thor one too. So maybe he was rushed to finish this, but. Yeah, I remember when I initially bought this in ninety, I was really disappointed with the artwork. I was yeah. like, ooh. Because, because these all were the same month, so yeah, he had to have mm. the two main stories for two of these annuals, yeah, the same month. So yeah, yeah, I just feel bad for her, her Trimpy, because like uh, uh, DG Chichester was telling us the one time, it's like they basically pushed him out in the nineties because you know because he we couldn't did. adapt his style to like you know like the you know like the McFarlands and the Jim Lees yeah. and stuff. So it's sad too because you can see like his artwork in the stuff right before they booted him out yeah he did a bunch of i think it was like remember when they did like the unlimited books like yes uh, avengers unlimited Fantastic and Fantastic Four, Four unlimited. Yeah. i think he did a bunch of those um right before they kicked him out of marvel but you can see that he was trying to to yeah do his thing but they yeah it's sad yeah the way that they treated him was really unfair yeah, but this this issue was not his best, and it, you're you're probably right. They probably rushed him to finish both of the annuals really quick, and unfortunately, the inker on this one, Jeff Albrecht, just wasn't a good fit for his art style. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I liked the script a lot, and I, the yeah. story was perfectly fine. It, it was it was nice to see the Great Lakes Avengers doing something. I guess. <laughs> Again, it's uh, they're always for a comedic effect, like especially <laughs> Mister yeah. Immortal. Oh, don't you forget? I can, <laughs> I, I can die, but I come back all the time. Yeah, I love that part where he where he peeks in at Terminus's face. He's like, "Hi, Peekaboo!" And Terminus like splats him like he's a, a bug on his forehead. And Mockingbird says, "I think I'm going to be sick." I mean, I know he always comes back, but you'd still think that would hurt, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, hold on, I'm just opening the issue here. Uh, but yeah, like that that full page where they say Avengers attack, and they're all like, that just that artwork is not doing it for me. I can't. Yeah, and again, it's like, it's not even like it's that bad, but it's like so different than all the other annuals. I think this like mm. Herb Trimpy he, his art here even looks different than the Thor annual. So yeah, I'm thinking it was around. Yeah, his yeah his own artwork in the Thor annual is better than than this by miles ahead. Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, the story was fine, and you know, like you said, it's kind of weird that Thor could have done this at any time, like done this as Guardian Rune Song and gotten Mjolnir back. But, but again, uh, he, need, he needed to find an atmosphere. So, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and that, it had to be a five part story. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> had to do all the Avengers annuals. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Uh, they even mentioned uh, Monica Rambo shows up for this too. 
Yes, I was happy to see Monica actually mm-hmm. in this. Yeah. I mean, you got some heavy hit. You got her, you got Quasar, you got Cersei on Earth. Uh, you know, Cersei's here. Yeah. Yeah, this one's not too bad. I mean, uh, that Mockingbird's still looking good. Uh, yes. Yeah. She still looks good. Thor still looks good. Yeah. Iron Man still looks good. It's just some of the, some of the panels. I think also with the big terminus. Yeah. The big terminus with the forearms and stuff just kind of looks weird to me. Yeah. It's so funny in the 90s because it depended on the artist because some of them did this and some don't. In Cersei's costume, some of them put like the like oh. the, the fur lining like the on, fur. The, on the yes like, around the edges and some don't. Sometimes yeah, it's just it depended who was doing it. Yeah, exactly. some was the fur and some was just the kind of the fabric of the costume. It's so funny. And sometimes it was colored white and sometimes it was green. Depended who the colorist was, yeah. too. Or sometimes they just had a stripe along that, that area instead of the, the fur yeah. lining. Yeah. yeah, and this was before they changed Quasar's costume. Yes, yes. So this yeah, he was, had the original costume. Yeah, so this was with somewhere in the first 16 issues, kids. Yeah, or 16 mm. or 17. Yeah. I mean, after it was retroactively changed through history, yes. <laughs> so, so he can beat the presence, yes. Yeah. Uh, I love how they tried to they tried to beat Terminus like he, Quasar beat him last time. He's but you know he put a platform under him. It's like yeah, me and Spider Man lifted him in the. <laughs> uh, Spider Man, yeah, I know. I, I love how he like, had to like, <laughs> like uh, explain that. He's like, oh yeah, it was like the, it was like that week he had cosmic powers. Remember <laughs> <laughs> that week that he was Captain Universe. You exactly. know, <laughs> yeah. That is the funny station where he's like, oh, I'm detecting an alien presence. And he goes looking for it. He's like, Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man? You're not an alien, are you? <laughs> but yeah. They, yeah they, they, they had Star Fox in here, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the whole platform things didn't work. So they had to wait for Thor to. That does look funny. You can't tell if like, Thor's like singing or like, he's going to be like whistling or something. Or... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He could be yodeling for all we know. Yeah. So that's right, kids. Termin supposedly <laughs> supposedly Terminus is destroyed again. Destroyed, supposedly, but he of course he does return. Spoiler alert. Yeah. I can't remember what his next appearance was after this. I know that in Captain America he went to the Savage Land and they yeah. ended up fighting the, the armor was being used again. Uh, and that was a few years after this, but I don't remember where, when we next see the real Terminus again. Let me see if I can find, uh, come on, give me a Terminus link. Uh, no, not Termini. Yeah, because he, he comes back, he's not that ultra Terminus, right? I don't No, I think he's just the, yeah, let's see here. He ate his baby. <laughs> Oh, he returned to Earth in astral form and infected the minds of the Moloids. Uh, what was that? I don't remember that at all. I didn't read that. I don't know if I read that either. Huh. And then sometime later, he returned in physical form, forcing the Avengers to face him. Spider-Man asked, uh, Captain America asked Spider-Man to call an Alpha to aid them. I didn't read that either. Hmm. I wonder how, how many years that was. Hmm. Oh, uh, wait. Terminus. Yeah, it's, uh... What was this? Mighty Avengers number 32. Yeah, this might be more than, what, what the last couple of years, maybe? That was from 2009, it says. Oh. So it's been a while. Oh, yeah. the whole thing with Spider-Man, Captain America. That was Amazing Spider-Man 694, so brand new day bullshit, Chris. Um, oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I'm seeing Avengers Volume 5, number 13, and Avengers Volume 9, number 1. Oh, yeah, that's right. Doesn't he show He shows up in Jed McKay's first issue, I think. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's his most current appearance. Yeah, he shows up in Avengers 1 by Jed McKay. I've still got to get that. Yeah. Yeah, get that. It's still early, because I think he, there's only, like, two issues on so far, so. Mm, nice. Yeah, I can get that. So, well, that's cool. I'm glad that he's he's come back in a big way. That's mm-hmm. exciting. Yeah. I mean, they don't really basically don't explain where he, where he's been. It's basically like, oh, he's back. We got to fight him. <laughs> he emerged from the black hole and he's hungry. Ain't that the way? <sighs> yeah. Uh, but yes, and okay. So then we get the the meet, the last media watch with Andy Rooney. Yes. Who did, and the those of you the who ticking t- of the 
the 60, the 60 minutes. minutes clock. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who don't remember any Rooney, yes, he was. He did his little commentary every week on 60 Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And he had the largest and most in charge eyebrows that ever were. And uh, luckily, in this artistic rendition uh, by Jim Reddington, they managed to get the eyebrows just right. Yeah, so I was going to say, they did not tone it down. No. <laughs> and then the next story, we basically get the recap. Mark Grunewald gives us the recap of uh, Acts of Vengeance. <laughs> yes, totally. It's basically yeah, essentially what it is. You, they go. The Avengers are sitting around after the events of the last yeah. chapter of the, the Acts of Vengeance story where they find the hidden secret room where all of the villains were meeting. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, Cap, Thor, and Vision are sitting there uh, basically piecing it all together with between them and uh, the wizards. Ba- the wizard has basically offered to testify, I guess, uh, Bentley Whitman. <laughs> the wingless wizard. Yeah. I mean, basically, again, maybe we'll get there someday. But yes, the Loki basically, free, you know, well, well, the people get free, uh, villains get freed from the vault, uh, thanks to the wizard, and then uh, they sink Hydro Base. Yeah, well, yeah, well, first Iron Man and Hawkeye show up at uh, the vault to quell that, but then Loki starts contacting the Kingpin, Doctor Doom, Mandarin, Magneto, and the Red Skull, mm. assembling his cadre of grade A villains. Yes. But yes, Doom sends some robots to sink Avengers Island, where there's only Quasar and the support crew there. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, basically, uh, a bunch of the robots the Avengers had in storage basically walked out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Except for, uh, is it the awesome android? Yeah, basically, uh, attack Stingray. Oh, yeah, Stingray. Who was cleaning up uh, the whole aftermath of the island after Quasar left. Yeah, that was the Avengers spotlight issue. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I even read that one. That's a good one. There's so much stuff. And then and then Cap and Four went to uh, Fantastic Four's uh, Four Freedoms Plaza to see if they could stay with them like the Fantastic Four <laughs> stayed with the Avengers when the, the Baxter building was destroyed. I remember that. That wasn't a Fantastic Four issue. But they yeah, that was. Yeah. The Fantastic Four wasn't home, so the defense is just basically... Uh, Captain Bay. I remember Thor's like, I could take him out. And Captain America's like, no, if I know Reed Richards, you take those out. Something nastier is going to come out. And, yeah. You know, even if it doesn't hurt us, the city's going to get trashed. And, uh, yeah. It's not worth it, Thor. Don't do it. So then, yeah, they say they called in the reserves to watch over the salvage operation. You know, we see Moon Dragon, Hellcat, and Black Widow in that panel. Black Widow. Yeah. So that's when they decided to open up the whole sub basement that where Avengers Mansion used to be. Hmm. And Namor gets taken over by the controller. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My favorite biscuit. <laughs> After that issue, I was like, hey, controller, you got any more of this control disc lying around? No, my. <laughs> uh, but I, basically, of course, the, the inner circle villains never agreed on nothing. Hmm. Naturally. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, we see uh, that the controller sent uh, Namor to attack Captain America. Uh, Thor had to battle the Juggernaut. Uh, then we see Quas- Quasar took on a few, but he had issue five. He took on the Absorbing Man. That was my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Love that one. Iron Man versus the Wrecker. Yep. Uh, Hawkeye and Boomerang. Yeah. And later, Angar the Screamer and Screaming Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> then Monica Rambo fought Claw after he got away from Quasar. Hmm. Uh, Oh my god, Absorbing Man got slapped around because, I mean, yeah, Quasar basically made him blow up, and that was after he got his, Absorbing Man got his ass handed to him by Joe Fixit. Yeah. Yeah, Absorbing Man was not having a good string of luck for a while yeah. there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The the UFOs attacked the, oh, the yeah. West Coast Avengers. I Vi- love that one. Yeah, the Vision was like, I was on the West Coast, so I'll tell you what happened there. Yeah, the UFOs, and then uh, yeah, the Mole Man subterranean creatures showed up. Uh, yeah. I love in these recaps, too. It's like the colorist just kind of gave up. The colorist was like, ah, to hell with it. This whole panel's going to be red. I, I, I know. Where that <laughs> the whole panel, thing's going to be red. Or that panel with Iron Man, he's the only thing that's like a different color than the rest <laughs> of the panel. Everything else is green. I know. <laughs> yeah, the colorist's like, ah, to hell with it. I've only got an hour to do this. Let's do it. And then it's like, oh, they're like, oh, our, all, a bunch of our old foes were busy, not with us, but attacking uh, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, and Daredevil. 
I love that panel. You just see Daredevil drop kicking Ultron. <laughs> Ultron in the face, yeah. Uh, that was probably the strangest X of Vengeance issue was the Daredevil and Ultron one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a two-parter. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Ultron was basically going through like some form of like... like uh, Mid- midlife crisis or like nervous like a, breakdown or something. It was like an, <laughs> almost like an associative identity disorder thing because he was like, you know, it was Ultron 13, but he was hearing all 12 previous versions of himself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They were all assembling together at the same time. Because like Doom rebuilt him and reactivated him and you hear all these voices in her head. They're like, he's the creator. And then the other voices are like, no, destroy him. Destroy him. <laughs> and then he, then he went after this girl, this this pretty blonde number nine who had daredevils hanging out with it. Just like yeah. uh, robots getting sexually excited. I'm like, what is going yeah. on here? Well, we wanted to cast it. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, let's not even go in the cast that where who, yeah. who he created were from the, off the brain p- patterns of uh, Janet, who, uh, you know, it was Hank's wife who Hank was Ultron's father. So, yeah. And then later on we get, um, Alchema, when he tries the same thing with Mockingbird in West Coast oh, Avengers, yeah, he towards- creates his own Mockingbird and Alchema. Yeah, like the last year of West Coast Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when he did that. I was like, you didn't learn the first time when he made Joe Casta? That didn't work out so good. But you're going to try it a second time. Okay. Well, All go right. for it. If you're listening to this at any point, Lil, we always talk about horny Doombots. What about horny Ultrons? Horny Ultrons. Yeah. <laughs> He's lonely. He's lonely, you know. It happens. And I love what they're talking about, you know, this like just basically this like string of like just like nobody's coming after the East Coast team like Hydro Man, the Jester, a Hulk robot in cloaking. Yeah. Uh, and then they then Freed- Freedom Force shows up. I love that panel. Just Freedom Vision, Force. Vision putting his arm through the blob. <laughs> <laughs> Start looking at the blob's face like what? <laughs> yeah. uh, Oh, and the, then, uh, yeah, Cap got to the controller himself in order to free Submariner. Yeah. Mm. And then Wasp and Wonder Man went to Washington to hold a press conference because uh, there was the bill that they wanted to register every superhuman. Mm. And that's when Gargantua showed up. Good old Gargantua. Mm. Uh, with most of the West Coast contingent helping out back east, I guess Cap said, I assigned Quasar, Moon Dragon, Hercules, She-Hulk, and Firebird the patrol the rest of the nation so again if we didn't see them through the rest of the crossover that's where i guess they were supposedly at mm. and subdue whatever vault escapees uh, and other perpetrators uh, i'm still waiting to hear what their final tally was <laughs> yeah i was happy they involved moon dragon in that too because yeah. she didn't have nearly enough time with the avengers either oh yeah oh and then it's like oh yeah spider-man took care of magneto himself <laughs> Really? Well, since when? Oh, that was so. Oh my god, that's so funny because like he has the cosmic powers all of a sudden. And Magneto's like, hmm, could he be a mutant? Let me check. <laughs> they just starts giving him all these random powers. Flight. He's blasting him with he's blasting him. Yeah. Magneto's like his powers are too varied. He's not a mutant. I'm I'm out of here. Yeah, his strength is like so much more than it was before. The funniest. Yeah. The funniest is like like. The very first the, uh, acts of vengeance for Spider-Man was amazing. Three twenty-six before he got the cosmic powers, he doesn't get them till the second issue. Oh yeah, and Gar- Graviton just basically like beats his ass. And th- but then at the last issue, right before he loses his powers, Graviton comes back and Spider-Man basically just like slams him <laughs> into the ground. He's like, "What happened?" <laughs> yeah, th- I love that. Uh, yeah, Graviton wiped the floor with him the first time. Oh yeah, time. but he yeah. lifted the Daily Bugle building and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, you could tell Axe of Vengeance was popular because even like months after the fact, they had like a lot of those guys who attacked Spider Man when he had the powers come back and were like, mm. they wanted a rematch, team up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, and then they, they, they the Mandarin. Yeah, they're showing the final fight. Yeah, they are fighting the Mandarin, and then <laughs> oh, hey, Doom was a robot. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Imagine that. But they're like, he must have switched it with a robot at some point. Because they're like, Loki probably would have known in that in the beginning there if that was a robot or not. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I guess that they don't mention what happens to the Red Skull because they weren't none of them were around. But I mean, eventually Magneto drops him in that pit. Right. Yeah. Mm. 
But yeah, basically the wizard was complaining to Loki. Well, they didn't know. It was like, oh, it's this this mystery guy in a suit and tie. But yeah, it turns out to be Loki. Turns out it's Loki. I love how like the red he's fighting the red skull, the Mandarin, the wizard, and the kingpin just like slinking out the door. He just leaves. He's like, yeah, I'm out of here. See you later, guys. Uh, but yeah, the Avengers show up for the final fight with Loki. Uh, and again, the colors said, ah, to hell with it. Yeah. Well, we're going to make this whole panel orange. All of it's orange. Mm-hmm. But yeah, some of the some of the, the rest of the villains were trying to get away. It's weird. They're saying the Red, Sk- the Red Skull was trying to get away, but wouldn't Magneto have grabbed him by that point? I think that, yeah, I think he was already in the pit at this point. Oh, he is, because when Vision Child stops him, it's a, skull, scr- uh, a Red Skull robot, so... Oh, that's right. He's yeah. another robot. So, yeah, yeah. So, that was probably their way around it. They're like, oh, wait, he's in the last story. Wait a minute. He's in that pit. Let's make him a robot. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Because they've got the, the remains of the Doombot and the Red yeah. Skull robot on the table. Yeah. Because yeah. Vision yeah. tried to phase. He wanted to phase through him to take him out. But since it was a robot, he just blew it up. Yeah. He took him out. All right. Yeah. And that's when they captured the wizard, too. But Mandarin got yeah. away through one of the magic doors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I love how they're sitting around the table and Cap's like, what could we do better next time where, you know, maybe we'll see something like this coming before it actually gets as far as it did. Yeah, that's a good question, Cap. I don't really know how you would. Vision says, maybe we take a a more aggressive approach to world security, orchestrate more preemptive strikes on perpetrators at large. Mm. And then Thor, always looking out for his bro, says, we need to rebuild the mansion stronger than ever. Hey, I know an architect. Basically, Eric Masterson. <laughs> yeah. Who he's he needs bond- some work, too. Yeah. He's bonded to at this point. <laughs> yeah. I need, I mean, Eric needs to eat. So, yeah. Hi, Eric. Sure. That's a good paying gig right there. Rebuilding Avengers Mansion. Yeah. yeah. So, basically, yeah. So, basically, at the end, Grunwald hat basically sums up with Cap saying, you know, you know, in the end, this was good for us. You know, it shows us where we were falling short and on stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's like, that's our strength. We learn from our failings, unlike our enemies. Do you think our seven major foes learned anything from this besides to never trust one another again? I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, he's like, he's like, had they been able to, you know, pull this off better than they've ever done together, I'd be worried. But yeah, if they had been able to work together instead of constantly infighting, if they weren't petty, yeah, no. yeah, perhaps they would have been successful. But yeah, it was doomed to failure already. Be- pairing up Magneto with the Red Skull. I mean, that's yeah. Stupid. That's so funny. It's you know, Magneto's like, yeah, you German war criminal. Red Skull's like, no, 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 I'm American. He's in that Captain America clone body. No, 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 I'm yeah. American. That's I'm not the original Red Skull. <laughs> yeah. Do a DNA test on me, I dare you. I think Magneto is basically like, no, you're either the original guy or you're 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 trading on his name, so Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh and then we get uh is this the last one? The the day the strangers came. Oh yeah, Kurt. Uh, Busiek wrote this one. Yeah, with another uh, kid, another kid story. Yeah, this one's a little bit more downbeat, actually, than the other one. Yeah, because uh, it turns out Captain America, Hawkeye, Quicksilver, uh, it's at the Wasp and Cersei are in town. They're tracking down the Sons of the Serpent. Mm. And this little kid uh, idolizes superheroes. Mm-hmm. He's got his own little costume, his own little cosplay costume that he's made. The mask and everything, and watches the Avengers go into action, watches their exploits on TV and all this stuff, and then realizes he overhears his brother in the next room and sees his brother in a costume belonging to one of the members of the Sons of Serpent, Mm -hmm. realizes that his brother's in the gang, and then goes to the Avengers and tells them about it. Well, he's basically the leader of, like, I guess this local chapter. Yeah. So he's like, mm. yeah, he goes to the Avengers. He's like, I know who you are. He's like, uh, yeah, my brother's the leader of the Sons of the Serpent. He's going to blow up New York and L.A. unless you stop him. And I, I know where he's going to be. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a downer. Yeah. Takes down, all of his, takes down all of his superhero posters and he he throws away his co- He gets rid of his costume and puts everything in the trash it's like oh yeah because he heard yeah because he heard on the uh, radio that yeah the avengers did capture his brother and stuff it's it's like yeah and it's not that he won't do the right thing uh just he won't look forward to it anymore yeah oh mm. oh no no the la- i think this is the last story uh, clowning around oh yeah. 
<laughs> this is a good one, actually. This is yes. another lighthearted one. And again, it's a different penciler, but look, there's there's a different take on Cersei's costume. Yes. Yep. With the green stripe instead of the yep. yeah. From the fur, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. It's the same issue. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of cleavage on that page. Cersei, She Hulk, Sam Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Something for everyone, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There's a lot of eye candy to enjoy there. Mm. I love the four, the the foreman of the crew. He got the sweat stains on his shirt. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, basically, it, basically, some of the some uh, D listers are basically just trying to attack the construction site, but the construction workers are trying to get to them before the Avengers see them because they're like, oh, the Avengers are going to mess up everything if they start <laughs> fighting these guys. <laughs> So, like, yeah, they tackle what plant man. Uh, the one guy t- t- hits him with a wrench. <laughs> Stilt man. Water wizard. Water wizard, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Stilt man. <laughs> Who basically just, like, trips over himself. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. They, they, they tie they, they his legs the, up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They pull some ropes around his legs. I love how they're like, oh, no, Falcon's bird saw him. They're like, Red Wing's going to tell him. <laughs> Stilt man's here. Then the wrecker shows up, and they're like, <laughs> They're like uh, they're trying to stop him. All the construction workers are palling on him, and yeah, then they basically just like dump a bunch of junk on him from the crane. <laughs> and the Avengers are basically just like those guys need to quit clowning around. Hey, whose crowbar is this? Didn't you yips hear what Cap said about safety? <laughs> it's, the, it's the Wrecker's crowbar just laying on the ground. I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know. Do you like that story? It was kind of ridiculous, but. It was kind of ridiculous. I thought it was fun, though. Yeah. Like, after the kind of the downbeat sad one with the little kid, it was a nice way to kind of counterbalance that with a little bit of humor at the end. Yeah. It reminded me kind of of um, damage control. Yes. Like, the same kind of spirit behind a damage control story. And I always liked some of those back in the day. So, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was fun. It was if it had been a little bit longer, I thought that the joke would have yeah. uh, gone on a little bit too much, but I felt like it was just the right length. Well, they had a bunch. They had a couple backups, so they probably just had were limited to page count and stuff. And mm-hmm. and at least we kind of end on a on a laugh instead of yeah, like you said, that downer of the one with the kid. Yeah, that would have been uh, too much of a sad sad note to end this on. Yeah, at least in my opinion, but. Yeah, on the whole, I liked it. the The issue was good. I mean, I yeah. the artwork I didn't really care for in the main story that much, and the the resolution to the story was kind of weird, admittedly. Mm-hmm. I I just thought it was strange, like Mjolnir being inside of Terminus. Like I, I don't know. I don't. It's weird to me. I don't get it. But I think on the whole, like looking at the whole thing, the five part Terminus Factor story. I thought it was pretty successful. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Oh yeah, yeah. I think again. I mean, most of, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was a good story. I like how it, it, we started off with a little microbe. Yes. That eventually, through the course of this thing, grew its way up to this 150 foot tall behemoth. Yes. Who then merged with another behemoth to become 300 feet tall. I, I just like the that that progression from a microbe to 300 feet tall i thought was really cool yeah and then like the then like the gag of, on the first page of every annual it's like you are here you are here pointing to each term and i as it gets yeah. getting bigger and bigger like a little size chart yeah. yes that was a nice little touch all right so final thoughts any anything else no, I think we covered just about everything. Yeah, what did, what did you think of it as a whole? Did again, you... I, I liked it. Yeah, it, it's yeah. It's been a while since I read these. I was gonna say I don't like again. I I didn't have the Thor annuals. So I don't know if I ever read the Thor annuals. So. Mm. I remember hearing, oh yeah, he had the Terminus had the hammer, but I don't think I ever read the actual until now. Yeah, I don't know. It seems weird. I mean, for some reason that ish that Thor annual seems again. It's not getting any love digitally, and it's like picking these up like again I, I got the first two parts and then i picked up the last two avengers and west coast avengers like as back issues years later but it's like i don't know if i've ever seen the thor annual in the wild anywhere mm, I, don't, I don't think i have either like multiple stores or back issues at conventions i don't think i've ever seen that thor mm-hmm. yeah unless it was like a low print or something or print that or something i don't know 
I know that my copy, um, I don't know if there was a print error mm. when it was made, but like some, there's some pages where the, the script is almost streaking, like on the, uh. on the page where it's like, yeah. I wonder, it, I wonder two or three pages like that. Oh, man, I wonder if that was like a printer's error or something. I wonder if maybe that's what they were, maybe they're waiting to try to find a full copy of that annual that's not, well. Doesn't have that damage yeah. in it, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I noticed that when I was rereading it, I was like, "Ooh, this is this looks kind of shabby." I wonder what happened here. Because that's stuff. Because that's stuff from the nineties. I wonder if they would they have digital files of that, or would they? Uh, are they just scanning it and kind of like tweaking it on you know on the computer once they scan it or something? Yeah, I think that they after they scan it in is when they did the the majority of the work on yeah. it. I think back back in that day. Well, I mean, now it's like, you know, if, it, if they're putting the 90s stuff on the app or, the, you know, do they have to scan it? I guess some of it they would have digital, maybe. Mm, they would have some pre, I think some pre-existing digital stuff, but it's possible that they're trying to find cleaner copies, mm. maybe to scan to get a better, a better image. Maybe some of those old files are huh. corrupted or old or whatever now. Yeah. All right, kids. I hope you enjoyed the Terminus uh, factor. I know we did. Yes. Send in your thoughts, too, about it, if you'd like. Yes. We'll read them on the show. Please. And again, like we said last time, yes, next episode, we're going to get to our first crossover with Gamma Charge. Yes. I'm so excited. You know, the show fans call, you know, that Hulk show with Justin and that other guy. Uh, <laughs> and that's their fans. So, yeah. So, uh, part one, we'll be doing life form for the cro first crossover. So, yeah, join us here for part one from the uh, Punisher Annual 3 and Daredevil Annual 6. And then jump the gamma charge for uh, the Hulk and uh, Silver Surfer Annuals. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. That's going to be so much fun. And then, yes, in two weeks, yeah, uh, Justin and I will be doing uh, Assault on Armor City from Darkhawk Annual 1, Avengers West Coast. Annual seven and Iron Man Annual thirteen. So yeah, I can't. That's gonna be pretty much a West Coast uh, crossover. Can't wait for that. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since I've read that one too. So I'm really excited to reread that one again. And then yes, and then uh, at the end of the month, yeah, will be our second crossover with Gamma Charge, uh, Return of the Defenders. But this time we will be part two. So uh, yeah, go check out Gamma Charge for part one from the uh, Hulk and Namor annuals. And then mm -hmm. join us here for part two from Silver Surfer Annual 5 and Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme Annual 2. Yeah, I'm excited for that one, too. I love that story. Well, yeah, your favorite biscuits in that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it follows up uh, a H Incredible Hulk story that yes. the three of us talked about earlier this year. It's on, kind of like a sequel to that story. Yes, yeah. on Gamma Charge, yes. Yeah, the Dark Hulk, yeah. Yeah, so if you're not listening to uh, Gamma Charge, yeah, go go subscribe now, kids. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, send us all your thoughts. Uh, hell, send us your feedback for those crossovers, man. There will have plenty mm. of room to read the feedback. So, uh, yeah, send us your thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes social media, merchandise, the Patreon. Join the Patreon elite like Justin here. Yes. And yes, it's worth the price of admission alone, trust me, just to hear Lilith and Phil talk about Heroes Reborn, uh, especially the Captain America, the Rob Liefeld Captain America issues. So, so funny. I was almost on the floor laughing from that. Yes. Speaking of drunken rampages, yes, Lilith Hellfire, yes, we're reviewing Heroes Reborn, and uh, yes, the August episode will be uh, the Iron Man Heroes Reborn, So, but nothing's going to top that Captain America. Yeah, that's that's gold. Yeah. So yeah, so find everything all in one place. That's uh tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. It's down there in the show notes. All right. And Justin, multiplying like Termini, his shows are. <laughs> yes, yeah. He, uh, he's here on Marvel Tales every week. In September he'll be here every two weeks. Uh he's on We Are the Night, the Batman podcast on uh the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks, and the upcoming Electric uh, Mullet, the uh, Superman podcast, where yes. him, I and Tyler Patrick will be reviewing all things Superman in order from uh, Man of John Burns' Man of Steel. So that will be episode one, and then we will go in order from there. 
Yeah, I'm super excited for that one, too. I can't wait to start that one. Oh, yeah. Will keeps telling me, he's like, that's the perfect name for a Superman podcast. I know. I know. That was <laughs> It really is. At first, I thought you were joking, but then I was like, no, that's perfect. That's I kind of was, but I was like, wait a yeah. minute. Yeah. Ask Lilith. If certain ideas get stuck in my head, I mean, they, they get bounced around in there for weeks or months. I'm like, man, I want to make that happen. <laughs> I It just, I, I've been reading back issues. I, I didn't forget, but it reminded me how much I love, like, that era of Superman. Mm. Me too. Like the late 80s and the, the 90s, yeah. Yeah, that was when, late 80s was when I started reading Superman. Yeah. Like right, right after Crisis. Yes. And, yeah, I was hooked. I was hooked right away. I loved it. I mean, so, yeah, so check out Electric, or Electric Mullet. Yeah, triangle numbers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so many triangle numbers. I love it. It told you exactly. You didn't have to flip through an issue to figure out where where, where it uh, took place and... Uh, yeah. Chronological order. Just like, yep, yep, yep. 1991, yep. two, three. There you go. All right. Four four books to keep track of. We needed some help back then. Exactly. And then they added a fifth uh, skip, uh, skip week book, like a once a quarter book, too. So, <laughs> Just for funsies. Exactly. So, yeah. So, Justin's going to be all over these feeds. But he also does more podcasting. So, uh, yes. yeah. Fill him in on the rest of that, Justin. Yes. Yeah, the aforementioned Gamma Charge. I co-host... Uh, two times a month with my pal Russell. We talk about everything to do with the Hulk and She-Hulk, and we also have a Patreon page with bonus episodes, so do check that out. And the two of us also co-host Predator and Prey, a Yucha podcast with our good pal Ray, in which we talk about everything to do with Fox's Predator in comic books, movies, video games, and more. And Russell and I are reactivating a show from the past, which I'll be very excited to tell everybody about next time after we record the first episode. It's a, it's a show that we started a couple of years ago. We got a, a few episodes into it and we kind of left it on the back burner for a while, but we're going to restart it again. And I'm very happy about it. And the lost library of legends, the, what's that show number seven, I think <laughs> uh, that one is almost done. I had to get some artwork done for that, for the social medias. So soon that will be all ready to go. Nice. Yeah. Oh. I'm a sucker for a guy with a powerful rod. <laughs> Scream at! <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. Uh, things in common, you know, cannabis and comics <laughs> and other things that starts with C. I'm in little hellfire. That's right. We're kindred spirits. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, kids, that's right. Thank you for joining us for the Terminus Factor. And next week, Russell will be joining us for part one of uh, Light. Yeah, part one of Light Form. And then, uh, yes, yeah. going to jump over to uh, Gamma Charge for part two. Yes, it's a summer of crossovers. Yes, Daredevil, uh, Punisher, Daredevil, yeah, and then Hulk and Silver Surfer. Yeah. There's a kid. 